Hey guys, it's Amber from NotableInk.com and today I'm doing a bit of watercolor and heat emboss resist with Simon Says Stamp Beautiful Butterflies. This video is part of the Hobbies and Pastimes video hop hosted by Sandra from Create in Spain. If you're new to my channel, welcome and be sure to check out some other videos before you leave. Here is Simon Says Stamp Beautiful Butterflies, which has six butterflies and 15 sentiments. Such a great set, you guys. And I'm gonna pair this with the Good Reading Background Stamp set, also from Simon Says Stamp. I've chosen my sentiment and I'm just gonna condition it with the palm of my hand. You want the surface of the stamp to be a bit cloudy, not shiny when you stamp to get a good impression. Now I'm stamping on watercolor paper which is cold pressed and has quite a bit of texture. I'll have the watercolor paper and all of the supplies linked down below. And I stamped it in a obsidian pigment ink. Um, the reason I did that is I wanted to make sure that I had a good stamping, especially because the text on this sentiment is really just the negative space and I can't really see the embossing ink. So that's why I used black pigment ink and then sprinkled Wow Primary Ebony Embossing Powder over the top. And I will do the same for all of the butterflies. I'm gonna stamp four butterflies. Now, again, this is a textured paper, so I did need to stamp each one of these multiple times. So you'll definitely want to use a Misty or a stamp positioner if you are stamping on a textured watercolor paper. You could also try hot press paper, but I really enjoy watercoloring on textured paper. So that's my favorite. So I have the background stamp here, and this time I am going to use the WOW embossing ink. Now, as I started to ink this up, I felt like my pad was a little bit dry. I wasn't seeing a lot of ink go onto the surface. So what I'm gonna do is grab the WOW, this is a long name, this is the embossing pad refill conditioner and freeze dial tool. So basically what this is, it's a bottle, it's a glass bottle of embossing ink, which is like a gel medium, and it has a roller ball on the tip of it, and you just roll this onto your ink pad and it re-inks it for you. It's really great, it goes on evenly, um, you don't have to squeeze the bottle like you have to do with some other, so it's really easy to use. So now I can tell that my ink pad is nice and juicy and that I'll get a good impression, and that's particularly important when you have a textured paper. I'll go ahead and place my um, card front down, and then I'll just use a scrap piece of paper just so I can run my hands over the top of this easier. Now you could also load this background stamp into an original size Misty if you wanted, but I was using my mini Misty, so I just put the stamp right onto my glass mat. Here I have the Wow Gold Pearl Embossing Powder. This is by far my favorite gold embossing powder. It's not quite as brassy or metallic because it's a pearl finish, um, but it's just gorgeous. I absolutely love it. So I've used quite, I use this a lot, but I still have so much left in, in the bottle. So you can see that I went ahead and stamped over everything. I stamped right over the butterflies and the sentiment. So I'm just gonna use a dry paintbrush that I have reserved specifically for this purpose to just knock off that extra gold pearl embossing powder. Now, I'm gonna knock a little bit off of the butterflies, but I actually wanna retain some of the text going through the butterfly wings so that it has a layered appearance. I want to get all of the embossing powder off my sentiment though. That's the one thing that I do want to be super black. Now, I could have cut a mask for that so that I didn't stamp over it, but I felt like it was just as easy just to knock it off with a, um, a brush. So I'm gonna go ahead and heat this and I have the WOW dual speed heat embossing tool here. And I'm just melting that powder, it melts super quickly. You do wanna make sure that you preheat your tool. I like to preheat it for a good 45 to 60 seconds so that it doesn't warp my paper. So here you can see that nice subtle gold and now I'm gonna watercolor the background. So my thought here, normally you guys, if, if, you, if you're new to my channel, I love bright colors, like super bright colors. They make me really happy. But with this style of card, I kind of was thinking about, you know how um, you've probably seen like when people paint on top of newsprint or like a dictionary page or something like that, it has more of a vintage feel to it. So my thought was to create some dulled down colors. 
So I'm mixing a couple different greens and some blues together to dull down those colors. And here I have a number 12 round brush. This is from Wonder Forest. And I'm just sweeping over the card front with some clean, clear water. I'm gonna pick up some of that dulled blue green and I'm just gonna swipe it over. This card design is going to be all about layering and I was just thinking that I was gonna be adding some color to the background. In the end, when this is all said and done, because I've left some white negative space, it starts to look a little bit like clouds in a sky, which of course is perfect for the butterflies, but that wasn't my intention going into it. Um, my intention was just to kind of have an abstract watercolory background. So I'm mixing a darker green here. I, I'm going to add some blue to that. And normally I, I don't really mix my colors too much. Normally I, for the most part, just take them right out of the pan because, again, I like those super bright colors. But I do enjoy mixing them just to see what other kind of color combinations you can come up with. So I have um, two different colors on here now and I'm going to create some darker colors to add more contrast to the background. And at one point I start to kind of wonder if I've gone a little too far and that's going to be with some of this dark blue. So I like how this is looking right now. And then things start to get a little bit overboard but I've left the footage in here specifically so that you can see how I fix it and get it back to a place that I like. So now I'm starting to add more dark green. And here's where you can start to see the white negative area starts to look a little bit like clouds because you've got the greater contrast in the background now, which I think is a really cool look. I think the darker pigments also help the gold heat embossing pop as well. So now I have some darker blue and this is where I'm like, mm, I might have gone a little bit overboard. Now you have to remember too that when watercolor dries, it dries back quite a bit, quite a bit. So it's going to be lighter and not as vibrant. But right here is where I'm like, whoa, this is getting way too busy. So I wet my paintbrush, got all the pigment off of it, and I'm trying to kind of sop that up with the brush, not very effectively. So I've come in with a baby wipe, and I'm just blotting up some of that pigment. I'm just going to add a touch more just to soften that edge a little. And here's the finished card. So super easy. Now one of the things I would recommend is absolutely let your watercolor panels air dry. If you have to heat set them, you want to hold your heat tool at least six inches away. When you heat watercolor paper quickly, the fibers of the paper start to contract and you get warping. Look how cool the layering of the gold text over the butterfly and the watercolor looks. I just love how this turned out. I hope you guys enjoyed this project today. I'll have a link to the next stop on the hop down below. Thanks so much to Sandra for inviting me today. Please let me know what you think down below. Thanks so much for joining me today. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing liking and ringing that bell so you don't miss any new inspiration. Here's a couple more videos for you before you leave and I'll see you real soon.